Boys and girls, now today I actually uh, got somebody that's on an interview with me. First of all, who's this cat we speak of? It's the one that presses button to talk to her human. And all of us actually watch her video. It's Billy Speaks and I got a hold of uh, their mom. Well, actually her mom, uh, which is Kendra, which is who we have online here. So hi Kendra, thanks for coming hi. in. Of course, thanks for having me. So I'm going to I'm gonna bombard her with all these questions that we've compiled together. Uh, lots of you have been DMing me and, you know, sending me stuff because it's it's actually harder to get through her because her channel is uh, it's a bit busy. Here. and she's got like do you do daily uploads because you, you guys have a lot yeah yeah I try. yeah i was just like i was actually just looking at like you know some of the stuff and i was like okay i have to talk to you it is a must and so today is the day everyone okay so let's start with let's jump in with uh some of the lightweight stuff shall we all right Okay, so um, first of all, um, a little bit about you and Billy. Like, how did how did you two like meet each other? How did Billy pick you as the human? Um, I actually got Billy when she was a kitten. Um, when I was an undergrad, she um, ran across the road, caused a car accident trying to chase a rodent, and um, and luckily it wasn't my car that was in the car accident. But I jumped out and I picked her up and I tried to find her home and I couldn't, so she stayed with me. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, so how old is Billy right now? She is 13. Like thir you know what? See, that's the thing with cats. You can never tell how old they are. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. Until they get like really seen now, like you can't really tell how yeah. old they are. And yeah, so, so did you have like other cats before Billy or was Billy like your first cat? Like definitely had family cats. Um, okay. But, you know, I got her really only like two years after I'm on my parents house so we've been together for quite a while now Ooh. and um and yeah so she's my first like my cat I, I know i've been watching like your videos for quite some time but i don't remember if you mentioned like when did you guys starting use that uh, started using the buttons to talk like how old was billy when that started billy was actually 11 years old we did not start when she was very young a uh, really yeah. frequent question that we get is you know is it too late for my cat and i would say that you know, if, if Billy can start at 11, age is very likely not yeah. a factor. <laughs> so you can actually teach an old cat new tricks because I guess 11 is considered old, right? In the world of cats. Probably like middle age, but definitely getting over mm. the hill. Um, you know, yeah. cats can live anywhere up to 20 years frequently. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, she hopefully has quite a bit <laughs> Or in her. Oh, oh, definitely. Now, and another thing is, now how long did it actually take for you to get traction? Because, okay, with a lot of like, you know, cat parents, we know that it's not the easiest to, well, I don't even think it's possible to train our cats, let alone trying to get them to do something or finding a way to communicate. Um, how long did it, you know, did it take for you to actually feel anything? Definitely more of a compromise with cats than anything. Um, we, when we started, um, you know, I kind of had my expectations that were, this is going to take a little while. I'd been following yeah. Christina Hunger um, at Hunger for Words for a couple of years at that point. And, um, you know, she definitely had mentioned that it took Stella quite a while. So I was expecting, mm -hmm. you know, three to four weeks and Billy pressed her first button on her own at three and a half weeks. So it was about what I was expecting, but it is, um, you know, that, that initial start is definitely hard. You have to continue the modeling, even though you're not getting kind of the reward of seeing them move forward. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just know yeah. that every time you model, they're definitely absorbing that information and just keep trying. Trying. I've definitely talked to people who it took even longer than that, a couple of months even. Oh. And um, I think one person told me they tried for six months before their pet started using the buttons. So that right there is dedication. I don't know that I would have wow. continued that long. I don't think I could either. Wow, six months is a long time because I think at one point I'll think that I'm talking to myself and I'll be like, Forg forget all of this. Like, wow. But yeah, I mean, it just, you know, it takes a little bit of time. Oh, yeah. Well, well, you're pretty lucky. It didn't take six months. But the, like, yeah. how would you say overall, like, did you think it was really, like, you know, the training at the, at the beginning, did you think it was especially like difficult or was it just kind of perseverance? 
it's more time consuming and patience mm. than difficult. I think once okay. we got a little bit farther on and we started adding words that were a little bit less concrete, um, especially right. recently with more of the time stuff, you definitely have to kind of think about it and have a plan of how you're going to model it beforehand. And um, I've a hundred percent messed up um, like a lot. <laughs> Thankfully, Billy is very forgiving. Uh, we do have oh, a video yeah. where I'm trying to figure out how to model um, soon for her. You know, English is really hard, right? Like if you talk to someone and you're like, what's the difference between soon and later? People are like, oh, well, geez. soon is sooner than later. Later. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. yeah. So it's, That's how do you, how say. do you describe that? Um, you know, it's you? more like life experiences. <laughs> and, you know, I decided with Billy just to make it so that it was a little bit less confusing for her. I was going to give soon a hard 15 minute timeline and anything within 15 minutes was going to be soon and anything after 15 minutes was going to be later just to make it a lot easier for her we sometimes mess up um, because you know when we just speak in English you sometimes say soon for a couple of days or whatever um so I do yeah. find myself correcting myself occasionally um she's corrected me before and mm. you know sometimes I'll say later and she'll say soon and <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it's definitely more perseverance, patience, <laughs> continued modeling than difficulty, but, um, mm -hmm. it is, it is a, it's an exercise in learning that your language doesn't actually make sense. Oh, or sometimes just the stuff that we say doesn't make sense. Like, like, you know how sometimes we say, oh yeah, see you later. But, but then maybe like Billy would take it like literally like, like later. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Now that actually leads to the next question. What was Billy's first, uh, the first command that she actually learned from the buttons? We started with food, which I a hundred percent would not recommend. Um, the only, <laughs> the only reason that I did that is because when I started, I had, I didn't know any cats that were doing this. It was only dogs. And, uh -huh. um, I was not convinced that Billy was going to be heavy enough to actually press the button. So I wanted to start with something that was very, very Ooh. rewarding for Billy of which food is. Um, and you know, it, it, it paid off in the end, but, um, mm -hmm. I had a lot of frustrating times where she was just kind of spamming the food button. That's actually how I added the later button is because I had to have some way of telling her that she could not have food all the time, every single time that she <laughs> asked. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, because I could imagine, like, she would, like, crazy, like, pounce, like, two-arm pounce on the buttons, like, yes. repeatedly. Oh, jeez. Yes. But, <laughs> no, when you said initially it was for dogs, does that mean the buttons were different, like, when they were for dogs than they are now? Well, initially, these buttons were actually made for humans, um, oh. for um, nonverbal children, mainly, okay. who um, are utilizing them as a way to communicate without actually using speech. So Christina oh. Hunger, who started this, she's actually a speech language pathologist, and mm. she, um, she used these buttons with her patients, and when she got a puppy, she realized that, um, you know, Stella was exhibiting a lot of the kind of nonverbal cues that many of her kids did. And mm. she looked because she was like, oh, I'm sure someone's done this with dogs before and couldn't find anything. And so she decided to try it. And lo and behold, this entire button phenomenon was, bolt, was born. Um, oh. So, yeah, so these buttons were initially made for humans. Um, the original buttons are made by a company called Learning Resources, which makes uh, many different things for children um, from mm. atypical to neurotypical children. And so it, along every spectrum, they have tons of really great products if anyone is interested in checking them out. So oh. we kind of utilized them. And then um, a, uh, a person that was very interested in animal behavior and cognition mm. kind of saw an opportunity and created this community called Fluent Pet. And they created buttons that were made specifically for animals and partnered with the University of California, San Diego to put together a research project um, right. studying the way that animals acquire the use of these buttons. And they're trying to determine right now whether it is actually language. Oh, wow. I, I did. If, if it wasn't because of you, I wouldn't have known that. I would just thought, that, hey, that was, somebody thought of make it for cats one day and here it is. Huh. But then that, that does describe why the buttons are so big, right? It's like half of them. Now, that kind of leads to what, what we're just talking about. Was there actually a moment that you actually felt that it was Billy that was 
training you as opposed to the other way around? Like, that, did that ever cross your mind? Yeah, a, a couple of times. I think the, the one that most frequently crosses my mind is I, I added a come button and I envisioned hmm. that I would use it for her, but truly she uses it for me to tell hmm. me to come. And um, <laughs> when I don't, she gets very angry about it because she feels like this is... Isn't angry <laughs> one of her favorite buttons too? She uses it all the time. Yeah, Mad. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, she's not shy about telling me how she feels. And um, I think that's great. It gives her um, a method of expression that is um, <laughs> that is maybe cathartic. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, she definitely puts a lot of emotion into that button. <laughs> now, another thing is, right, other than you, like, have you ever uh, get other people to use the mat with her? Or is it only exclusive, like an exclusive form of communication with you? Oh, yeah, she uses it with a number of other people. Um, I live oh. with my partner and she she talks to him frequently. Um, she's Ooh. spoken to my mom, to my sister, to every single one of her pet sitters. Um, COVID kind of made it so there was a period of time where she didn't really, we didn't have anyone over. So she was only using it, you know, with me. But mm. um, but since some of the, the pandemic has lifted, um, she's definitely utilizing it with a lot of different people. The, the biggest thing that happens is that, um, you know, new people who come in are not used to the board. They don't know where the words are. So the conversation's mm. a little bit stilted. And, mm. um, and, and the other thing is that you really, you really need to give her a lot of time, which is uncomfortable oh. for people. You need to wait, you know, 30 to 45 seconds between button presses, which is not what we're used to with spoken words, right? If you had to wait for someone to respond to you for 30 to 45 seconds, you would be like, uh. That's so awkward. It's like this weird <laughs> dead air. Like you don't even know if the sentence is finished or not. Like wouldn't that lead to a yeah. lot of confusion? Exactly. So I tend to give her, you know, up to a minute, depending on how her body language is when we're having our our communication with the buttons. Um, and, and a lot of people kind of, you know, you have to practice at waiting for that, but they think like she presses one thing and then they just, they have to jump in for it. So conversation is not quite as long with other people as it is with me, but she definitely utilizes the board with other people. That, that is an interesting way of communicating. That is so weird because in my line of work, anything more than a second and a half is considered weird dead air. And then we have to jump in and kind of fill in the gap, right? So for, I guess with, then with Billy, then you're like, nope, still tapping your fingers, waiting uh-huh uh-huh then how do you know if the sentence was actually done like you know how sometimes we say something like no comma and then something right or is it just a hard no that's it like how then then how do you know <laughs> I don't I guess is like the short answer you know I I've hmm. gotten a little bit better at reading her um I'm finished body language with the button, but um, oh. she does have a tendency to after she presses the button, she'll look at me. And I take that as a, making sure that I'm paying attention and like listening to her. Um, oh. But frequently when she's finished with a, with, a, with a thought, she'll come and sit right in front of me. And that's usually her cue for like, I'm done and I'm waiting for your response. Um, oh, so, so yeah, cool. so that's, that's usually it. Um, but sometimes I am fooled and I think she's done and then I'll be about to press a button and she'll press another one. So, um, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'm not always, always a hundred percent in my guesses. <laughs> what? No. Before I dive into a deeper question, I found out the other day that, um, Billy and Kendra live in a vertical cat house as well. Um, not exactly like this, but I remember you were turning your camera the other day yeah. and let's see. Ta -da! Our little wall. Look at our little that. Bridge. Look at that. Oh, this, it just makes me so happy every time I see it because frankly, not many people have it. Yeah. 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 Well, it does yeah. take some work. And, you know, like you said, drilling into walls is not always an option, especially when you rent yeah. a space. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but no, I mean, I, I've been super thrilled with it. She, um, she's not quite as adventurous as I had hoped and has not uh, utilized the bridge, even with all sorts of <laughs> treats as a, as a bribe. <laughs> but, um, it, but it's kind of like that as they get older too, right? Sometimes yeah. they just don't want to jump nearly as high. 
Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, and her, um, she, I've definitely noticed recently that her, her hips are getting a little bit, um, a little bit more painful. So she's on some medication for that. And, oh. um, and I think that overall she's just, you know, she's more comfortable closer to the ground, which is fine. Actually, like Kendra is like the perfect, perfect cat mom because she herself is a zoo vet. So yeah. And I was like, you know what, I, I, if I can go back in time, I would, I would maybe just summon all the courage that I have because I'm afraid of blood and actually study in the same, same field or similar field because that is something that I really wish I have right now. When I look at my cats, I'm like, what does that even mean? But yeah, there you are. And you, and you know most of these. Oh, I'm so jealous. Okay, so now digging into uh, the more intense questions. Now, some of these are actually compiled um, you know, with me and, and, and some of my subscribers who also happen to be your subscribers as well. So, okay, this one is actually from uh, both of us. Um, now, how has training Billy to use the buttons helped you with your daily life? And uh, what did it help you to uh, achieve that you cannot otherwise? Is there any examples or anything that comes to mind? Yeah, I think the biggest one, the biggest surprise to me is that Billy at 13 years old still wants to play. Play is probably her most frequently pressed button. Um, huh. She uses the most emotion with Mad, but play is definitely the one even above food. She just, she oh. still wants to play. And, um, you know, that to me was really interesting because she does not have the typical kitten behavior of like initiating play with her body language. But every time she presses the play button and we start playing, she truly does want to play and she's very oh. into it. So it made me realize that potentially just like in humans, as we age, we still enjoy playing, but we don't necessarily initiate oh. it the same way that we did as kids. There's this inhibition that is started as you grow up that is, you know, maybe we're as humans interpreting the fact that older cats don't want to play as much as they don't want to play as much versus they just aren't kind of showing us with their body language the way that they did when they were kittens. Oh. Um, so that to me was very, very useful. And the other thing is hmm. how sensitive to noise she actually is. You know, we always hear that hmm. animals have great hearing, right? And you can right. hear, or you can like listen to the difference in decibels that science is going to tell you that animals can hear versus humans. But really just seeing her react to some of these noises that to me is just barely background or that I don't even hear at all. And right. to her, it's, um, it's, something that she either wants to tell me about and inform me or something right. that she wants me to stop because it does, she doesn't like it. Um, <laughs> to to so create a shut, shut up button. button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> she, she usually says noise, ouch. That's her, um, that's her phrase. Um, mm. Uses it pretty consistently. She actually used it this morning to get me to close the balcony door. Um, so yeah, she definitely does not like certain noises. And even though she has multiple rooms, she has areas that she can go to where the noise may be dampened, she doesn't do that. She uses her buttons and it's like she wants me to kind of control the environment instead of her removing herself from it. Um, so again, <laughs> there's like that kind of disconnect between the nonverbal language that we would associate like now to the point where if Billy actually physically reacts to a noise, then I'm really concerned about it because I think that it's way, way, way too loud. So potentially right. our animals are living with these, these noises that are not nice for them, but it's yeah. just such a constant thing that they don't react until it gets to a point where they truly cannot handle it anymore, which is never something that we want. Um, yeah, so I course. think that this kind of gives me um, a, a pre like pre freak out um, warning for some of these noises that she doesn't like, but they're not to the point where she's going to run and hide under the bed. And that's so interesting. Like, it's kind of related to when you said the play. It's not that she doesn't want it. She needs you to be the one who initiated it. So it's the same thing with noise. It's like, I don't want to be the, the one that's running away. You do something about yeah. it. <laughs> that is, you know, maybe, maybe like, um, you know what they say, right? As we get older, sometimes we get the attitude. It's maybe, maybe <laughs> as Billy's getting older, she's getting that catitude as well, right? She knows, like, I know what I want. Like, in human years, I'm older than both of you yeah. and your partner combined 
So you do what I say instead of you telling me to do something about it, right? She's definitely well, in charge, head of household over here. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh definitely. Now another thing is we we actually talked about it earlier um, about the more complex subjects. You said like you know soon or later, right? How how do you get at it when you're introducing these more not just complex but more abstract concepts? Because even even if you're trying to explain it to like a child, it's kind of hard sometimes too. And how do you know that um, Billy gets it? Absolutely. Like to answer your last question first, I don't know that mm. Billy gets it. I mean, I <laughs> think that um, <laughs> I think that overall, like the longer that we've done this, it's all it's become a lot harder for me to maintain my skepticism. I still I still have a healthy amount of skepticism that she could just be pressing random buttons and I'm interpreting them. There's an awful lot of bias between us. We've known each other for 13 years. So um, I could be reading into everything that she's doing. That being said, um, there are a lot of situationally appropriate presses that far outweigh the non-appropriate presses. So it gets okay. harder and harder as we go on for me to say that there isn't some form of communication that's occurring here. Um, mm -hmm. But some of the abstract words have been very difficult. And I guess I can start with mad because that's a really frequent question. Um, I yeah. Mad was actually her third word, which I... Oh don't know why I decided to do that. An abstract word as her third word was um, maybe a little bit ambitious, but it is the, yeah. not the fastest button, but one of the fastest buttons that she's ever picked up. It only took three instances of modeling for her to start using it appropriately. Um, huh. One where I moved her off with my lap when we were cuddling so I could go to the bathroom, which she did not mm. like, and I pressed mm. mad, and um, and I modeled that for her. And then the second two, when I told her that she could have food later, and then I pressed mad for her to model it. And then the time that she pressed it, I moved her off my lap to go to the bathroom again, and she marched straight over to mad and pressed it, and it was just with so much force that I was like, oh, my God. Um, I was like, <laughs> so really, like, really mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that is not okay. Um, huh. So, and then since then, she just really, she really took to it. Um, huh. You know, some of our earlier videos are truly just her spamming the mad button. And a lot of people have kind of hypothesized that it's because she didn't have the rest of the words to express herself because her use of mad has declined as we've gone on and she has more words. She still Ooh. uses it. She used it twice oh. this morning. Um, so, <laughs> so she definitely still like wants to tell me when she's not feeling well, but she rarely has those periods where she just sits there and presses the mad button. And so I think that it's a fair hypothesis that, you know, initially we had just started mm. giving her these buttons and she's limited in what she can yeah. say to what I give her. So that has to be frustrating. Um, you know, she, she may know far more, words than what I have available for her to press. Because, yeah, how many yeah. words do you guys have now? We are at 60, 61, I think, maybe 61. 61. So it's yeah. so most of the stuff is limited to that keyboard right now, um, for exactly. now, until other yeah. words are discovered. Exactly. Yeah. So if you can imagine only having 61 words to describe, you know, things that you need to do or how you're feeling, it's got to be a little bit difficult, right? Um, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone who's learned a foreign language, learned a second mm -hmm. language, when you're first getting started, it's kind of the same thing, right? You end yeah. up trying to describe things that you know in your own language with yeah. words that you know in this other language. And you can come up with some very interesting ways of describing things. And um, ah, and it is, yeah. I mean, like, it, it is interesting um, to mm -hmm. kind of think about how you might explain something if you truly only had these this many words or yeah. uh, you know it's it's kind of nuts so I think that overall yeah. she does a pretty good job with what she has <laughs> he's like I'm a mature woman he's like you only give me 61 words and you want me to talk like a child no yeah. no exactly. no no <laughs> another thing is I remember um you mentioned something about catnip water before did you want to tell everyone about that one I thought that one was really cool yeah. Um, so catnip water is what Billy has named my coffee in the morning. So every morning I have some coffee with her and usually she has some catnip with it. And um, we have a couple of older videos. It's actually about a year. And one of our followers was the one that mentioned that she felt like it was 
the coffee that Billy was talking about because I had no idea. She kept pressing catnip water and I couldn't figure out what she wanted. You know, I even tried that like catnip Ooh. tea that was going around for a while. And Billy looked at me like I was crazy. She wanted nothing to do with it. So okay. someone was like, I think that she's talking about your coffee. And I went back and I looked at all the videos and and I, um, and I agree. She definitely was, you know, kind of zeroing in on my cup and then saying it. So I think that's going back to the way that she has, you know, a certain amount of words to describe what I'm drinking and it's got a smell to it and it's mm-hmm. liquid. And mm. she, you know, she has a catnip and she has a water button and that's what yeah. she's trying to say. Um, so, yeah. So now we call it catnip water and catnip and we have our catnip water and catnip every morning and it's kind of our ritual <laughs> together. <laughs> well, she's, she's actually not wrong. If you think about it, we do kind of get like a little high off of it. Yeah. Right. It's not that is not their type of high from catnip. I wish it was like that. But hey, we'll we'll take that for now. (laughs) Now, another thing is what was what was your logic, your logic when it comes to like communicating with uh, Billy in such a way like and what inspired you, you know, to to do that? I was just so blown away by what Christina was able to do with Stella that, um, you know, I, it's hard to like watch that and not kind of want it with your own pet. Um, Mm. so I really, you know, I'd wanted to try it and, um, it wasn't until the pandemic hit that I felt like I actually had the time to kind of start and really dedicate a little bit of time to it. So it was a bit of a pandemic project. Um, Mm. and, um, and I think that that extra time that I was able to donate to it kind of really helped in the beginning. Um, Mm. so, so yeah, that was, that was kind of like the impetus to starting. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, sometimes it's like, it's like that when I saw your channel too, but then I, my biggest hesitation is, well, I guess our floor space isn't nearly as big, (laughs) right? In Hong Kong, that would probably take up my whole entire living room. And I don't know how it would work if I got like, cause I got nine cats, right? So I don't, I don't know how that would, cause it's just you and Billy, right? It's, I mean, there's no other, there's no other animals at home for you, right? Correct. It's just really- Although there are a number of people in the study that have multi-animal households. Um, oh. One that comes to mind is another cat family. Um, mm. And they have four cats. Uh, the handle on YouTube and Instagram, if you want to check them out, is Catman John. Oh. Um, oh. And um, Russell is the only one of the four cats that uses the buttons. So oh. same modeling for all four cats. And, okay. um, and only one really took to it. So mm. it is quite interesting to see. Um, there's also another family that comes to mind that has two dogs and only one of the dogs um, uses the buttons. Huh. And sometimes that dog speaks for the other dog. It's very interesting. They speak. Oh, really? Yeah. So, oh, okay. So there's a messenger the dog. Yeah, exactly. Huh. So there's one that uses them and one that doesn't. There's a video where um, the dog that doesn't use the buttons is trying to get a bone off the couch, I believe. And mm. um, the one that does use the buttons presses like mom help, I think, something like that. Um, oh, wow. It was really cool. Yeah, it was very neat to see. Um, so it, those are kind of like, you know, the questions that we um, that we really like answering because it does kind of show that that move towards saying that this is actually communication for an animal to see another animal need something and then right. utilize this communication board because they are the ones that can um, and then huh. press situationally appropriate buttons for what's happening around them. It's hard oh. to it's hard to really say like, okay, that was just random, but you know. <laughs> what was the biggest obstacle when it comes to training Billy or you know, if when Billy was training you? was that one biggest problem? Um, I think that the biggest obstacle is just making sure that you are patient and consistent. Mm. Um, it definitely takes a lot. I'm not, I don't want to say a lot of time because mm. I, you know, I work full time. I sometimes have very, very long hours. I spend about 30 minutes talking to Billy in the morning. And then when I get home, oh. we have, you know, we have a couple of hours together, definitely at the very right. least but not all of those are spent with the board. So Mm. I think it's just making sure that you, especially in the beginning, make that time to continuously model these words. And sometimes it feels very silly, right? Like the minute that you give them food, you're pressing food and you're saying food over and over again. And it can, it's, you definitely, you eventually get over it um, Mm. and it doesn't feel silly anymore. But when you're first starting, you know, when you're petting them and you just continuously say pets, 
pets, pets, pets. It's, it's quite strange. So you just, I, you mostly just have to get over yourself and your own like feeling of embarrassment. <laughs> well, they don't, I, I hope they're not judging us. Even if they are, it's only us and them. It trains us to get ready to have our egos shattered. Support my channel. If you like my content and want to keep my channel alive, all the information's in the description. Thanks guys. Exactly. Yeah, you definitely cannot have a big, uh, big ego when you're around cats. They're going to take you down a couple of pegs. Oh, um, but yeah, I think honestly, it's just making sure that you consciously kind of put the time into it um, more than anything. And now that we are kind of established, it's not that I don't put as much time into it, but it's a lot easier. I don't have to spend quite as much time actively modeling each word because at this point she knows that when I put a button down, mm. that's to be utilized for her. Like she knows that that's for her essentially. And uh -huh. it's really just a couple of instances that we need to get the point across of this, this location is this word. And then she picks it up much faster than she did. I think the new one, I think there's a video that you posted, like I think with uh, not too long ago, it's, uh, was it to go for a walk? Is that the button? Or how, how, how's that one coming along? It's good. Yeah. We added that because um, before I just had an outside button because we kind of had a bigger backyard that we could kind of right. go out in. And she heard the word walk because we would still go for walks. But whenever she pressed outside, we would just go in the backyard mostly. But here, our balcony is a lot smaller than our old little backyard was. So right. I wanted to give her the option to say, like, she actually wants to go, go outside instead outside. of just onto the balcony. Um, so her outside button is for the balcony and her walk button is kind of when we go outside and we would do walks just in the neighborhood. I do eventually want to add um, an adventure button because that's usually what I say to her when we go like on hikes or, you know, oh. going places that are not just let's walk outside type thing. Um, so that will definitely be in the future um, as another option for her. Wow, that's that's gonna be so exciting! Like I'm, I really look forward to like you know all the categories. I was like, okay, there's hiking, there's ex there's uh, there's trekking, there's urban exploration. Mm. Oh, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be very interesting. Wow. So um yeah, so because I was just seeing that video and I think like it was about the one that she's like doing mom 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 and then you're going over there. And then yeah. she was mad that you wouldn't do it earlier. It was like soon or, or something. And then, yeah, it was just really, it was just really fun. It just, it's just so much fun watching your video. It's so sticky. I go through like 10, 20 at a time and my friends oh think my I'm God. crazy. Well, at least they're like short, right? So. Yeah, my, my friends think I'm crazy because usually people watch like a variety. And then yeah. sometimes like we're just sitting in a group and then they're like, you're still watching that video? I'm like, no, it's a different video. They're like, no, it's the same. I'm like, no, it's the same cat, same settings, a different video. They're like, there's no variety. I'm like, no, there's a lot of variety. They're just doing different things using the same protocol. And they're like, okay, whatever. It's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. Okay. Now, another thing is, um, now I asked, I asked you about how many buttons you had. You said, what, 61, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the longest sentence that uh, Billy has ever formed? I'm guessing four or five words. She's, I think she's at six now. <gasps> wow. Do, do you remember what that sentence was? Yeah, mom want catnip water now hmm, was definitely one of them. And then oh. she, how many was that? No, that was five words. She's had one other that was six words. I think there's only been twice that she's done six. Um, but typically like her, it it, typically it's about two to three. That's kind of what she does. Right. Um, sometimes it's just one, but typically two to three is kind of what I get out of her. And then mm. um, occasionally there's a, there's a little, like a longer thought that she kind of wants to get out. And then the, the short, short and sweet ones were good. The one with the thunder and then when the thunder, the lightning was done and then it's like all done times two. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, maybe, you know what? Maybe it was kind of like wishful thinking on her side. It's like, it's all done, right? It's like, it's, <laughs> please, it's not going to happen again. Yeah, Yeah, because you mentioned with the noise, right? So yeah. I was like, maybe there's an element of wish, wishful yeah. thinking in there. Now, um, now, how long does it take um, for, you, you said it gets easier after you've established, you know, that communication method. But like for, like for right now, how long do you think it usually takes for Billy to, you know, have a, a pretty good grasp on a word in your opinion? 
I think it kind of depends on the word. Any of our mm. more concrete words, really, it's only it only takes a couple of instances of modeling at this point for her to get where the location is. But mm. you know, recently we started playing around a little bit more with time, and I added morning, afternoon, and night. Oh, and geez. she's still trying hard. to figure. Yeah, she's still trying to figure those ones out. But it's really intriguing to watch because it seems like she is really trying to wrap her head around it. Um, you okay. know, and sometimes she'll press a button. I have a, I had a re maybe a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video that um, she was trying to figure out the difference between afternoon and night. And she oh. pressed the night button. And I said, okay. no, baby, it's afternoon right now. And then she went back over to the board and pressed afternoon. And then mm. throughout the next couple of hours, she continued to press afternoon, like kind of just it. I read it as like kind of to see like, is this right? Are we in afternoon right now? Right. And so, you know, each time that she kind of does that, we I would say like, yes, now afternoon, night later, morning before. And, you know, just trying to give her those contexts for it. One mm. of the ones that's really difficult, though, is that, you know, morning for us this is another way that the language is typically not very like great to describe to people who have never heard it before but morning yeah. for us starts at midnight when it's still dark oh. right that's technically morning well, so when yeah. I get up in the morning it's mm -hmm. you know it's 5 30 in the morning and it's still dark outside and so mm -hmm. to Billy she's like but it's night because it's dark outside but I'm having my catnip water which is in the morning and then mm -hmm. on the weekends when I get up and it's a little bit later and it's already the sun's already up and then oh. I have my catnip water and it's morning you know, I think right. that that's kind of where I'm struggling a little bit. And mm. I definitely have like one video where it was, it was morning, but it was dark outside and she pressed night and I told her no, it was morning. Oh. And, you know, we had a couple of commenters say that it was just going to be confusing for her because she's looking at light versus dark. And I 100% agree with that. But I don't know that like changing what actually morning is just to <laughs> establish that, like then I should re replace the buttons just with day and night, I guess. Mm. Right. Yeah. So these are the ones that like, you know, I don't, I do not claim to know everything mm. that I am doing is correct. This is the way that we decided to mm. do things. Um, mm. It's not the way that I think that everyone should do things by any means. Mm. Um, Billy and I are learning together. We're figuring. Support my channel. If you like my content and want to keep my channel alive, all the information's in the description. Thanks guys. That's but just that process the itself is so fun. It is. It is. Oh. And, you know, learning is inherently frustrating, right? Like everyone during some period of time when they have learned something, there is this area of frustration of I don't quite yeah. get it. Yeah. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing because the sense of accomplishment that you get after you do get it is like quite large. And mm. the fact that Lily continues to go back to these time buttons, I think if she was overly frustrated, she would just, yeah. she wouldn't use them, you know? Like, that's like, true. There's no positive reinforcement for her when she presses afternoon. I don't give her a treat. She's just getting the fact that she's pushing the button and I'm talking to her and that's it. Yeah, um, that's actually one of the questions that, um, that all of us had in mind that I have on the list, yeah, this list here, um, which, well, I guess I'll ask it now since you're talking about it. So yeah. it's not every time she press a button that there is a reward. No. Not really. There are oh. some that kind of have positive reinforcement built in. So food, right. obviously. Pets, mm -hmm. because she gets pets when I do it. Uh, play, because immediately when she presses play, we get to play, and that's reinforcing for her. But there are a number of buttons that there isn't necessarily a reinforcer that comes right afterwards, right? Huh. Um, so the time ones are definitely one of those. Um, noise, I guess, could be. If I know what the noise is and I make mm. that noise stop, that's probably reinforcing. Um, mm. But yeah, and when she just says hello, it's not really You're like, hello. Like afterwards. <laughs> hey, do you press the buttons back to her? It's, it's not just for her to press, right? Sometimes right. It's, it's, it's for you also. In the beginning, I 100% did because the way that she knows which button is which is by location. So ah. just by me talking to her, she would have no idea which button said what unless I press it as well. So I have to model it for her by speaking as well okay. as by pressing that button to make okay. sure that she associates that word that I'm saying out loud with the word that's coming out of the button and also the location on the button. If you can think back to like when you were learning how to type on a keyboard, right? You frequently had to look down. At the <sighs> I still do. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, we all learn it by muscle memory. Right so you don't have to mm. look anymore and you immediately mm. know where they are. And if someone asked you to write out a keyboard, yeah. you probably have some trouble. 
you don't yeah. know exactly which ones you're pregnant. You could probably figure it out just by pretending to type, but you wouldn't be able to be like, oh yeah, this top line is yeah. this, this is whatever. And you know, the other question that we get frequently is, well, why don't you move the buttons around? And we have in the past, and I, I can definitely talk about that a little bit, but mm, it yeah. was a little bit like rearranging your keyboard and okay. also taking the letters off because she can't read what's on those buttons. Right. She just based on location. Just. That's the only way that she knows where those buttons are. Oh, it's by location, not even by listening. I think she does listen to it once she presses it because occasionally she'll press a button okay. and then kind of think about it and press the button that's right next to it. And I read that. I, we added an oops button, and now I do know that that is when she is accidentally pressing a button. So she'll press a button and then be like, that's not right. And then she'll press the oops button and then she'll go back. But, you know, it's like if we have a typo, if yeah. we're right next to each other, it can be difficult to, huh. you know, 100% get it right all the time. So, yes, um, I, she does have typos occasionally. <laughs> and and so um, according to what you said, it doesn't seem like, now going back just a little bit to what you were mentioning before that, so... She doesn't press the buttons obsessively that give her rewards directly. No, it doesn't seem so. Um, she definitely has a few favorites that she presses more frequently than others. And occasionally she will get into kind of like a, uh, a food or a play like rabbit hole or like a pet's rabbit hole or a right. rabbit hole. But that's just <laughs> like with anything. Exactly. Like, and definitely huh. the requests are the more frequent ones. Um, hmm. But she doesn't seem to just press those buttons it seems to have um a pretty big like range of what she decides to go for and um and it is it's interesting to kind of watch um her move from requests to just narration to um you know it, just informing me of the inner monologue what was i say i think uh, in the one i just watched uh, just last night she was keep pressing her button on like want but she's not pressing it and she's touching it all these times it's almost like yeah i kind of want it but i'm not gonna say it <laughs> that's really interesting to me i see it a lot and a lot of oh. people comment on it like the where she'll put her paw on a button and then she doesn't press it um hmm. and i don't know exactly how to read that i think sometimes maybe she changes her mind or potentially it's not the right button and she realizes it i i honestly don't know um huh. there yeah there's there's a number of instances where she just kind of lightly touches it and doesn't press it does it, it happen to specific it. buttons or, or is it can it, it be any button it seems like any button um that she'll sometimes just kind of like and you know, occasionally when she's doing her, we call them thinking loops, like she's, you know, thinking about what she's going to say next and she's continuously moving and mm. she'll like walk through the buttons and she'll kind of do this and then just keep walking. And it's like, was that intentional and you just didn't put enough weight on it or did you, cha did you change your mind? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I thought that was really interesting when she was just keep touching the wand. It's almost like people when we're, we're not embarrassed, but when we're thinking about what the other person says, like, we don't want to hurt your feelings. We don't want to bother yeah. you. I don't want to be a nuisance, but I kind of, you know, if it's okay, like, you know, it's yeah. kind of like that. That was the impression I was getting. I was like, oh, yeah. Billy. Yeah. yeah definitely. Oh. I mean, it could, it definitely, you know, I think that it, it definitely is like a kind of a personal choice. Um, mm. I, it does take time. It does take consistency. But ultimately, I am just this huge proponent of feline enrichment, right? And obviously, you are too. You've given your cats this incredible home to run around in. And if you think about it, and if the pandemic taught us anything, it's that mm. um, staying inside your apartment without any external stimulation is incredibly depressing. And yeah. um, it's it's hard. And people wonder why their cats sleep all day. It's because there's nothing to do. <laughs> So yeah. I think any way that you can enrich your cat, um, the life of an indoor house cat is not that enriching. We have to actively try to give them things to physically stimulate them, to mentally stimulate them. And whatever that may be, whatever you mm -hmm. feel like you and your cat can do together is excellent. You know, I think these yeah. buttons are a great resource. Do I think they're the only way to enrich your cat? Absolutely not. Um, yeah. so, you know, they are just, they're a tool that we use. Um, mm -hmm. they don't replace our nonverbal communication. They augment it. They increase right. the brain power that Billy gets to use during the day. They increase the time that we get to spend together and mm. all of those things are good. There's no downside to using it. Yeah, um, true. But yeah. I mean, I think that ultimately it's really just kind of what you have 
to put into it. And not everyone has the time, space, or money to put into these buttons. Mm. And that's okay, because yeah. you can figure other things out. True. But yeah, I, I really like that. It's like part of it's, it's part of something that we can add is like a little bonus thing just for, you know, stimulation, not just for them, but for us in our dynamic in general, because sometimes I think is, you know, cat parents, we wish that there's more things that we can do with them uh, because not all cats like to go out and that already limits a lot of what we can do with them. And sometimes when we're home, there's people only think of, you know, interaction as being, you know, petting and playing. And then now this suddenly opened, you know, like the window for like a lot of stuff that we usually don't even think about and, and there's perks to it and uh, you know so why not but uh, I just want to say thank you so much Kendra thank you like I finally got a hold of you I you have no idea how happy I am because like I myself like I binge watch your stuff like I when I sometimes when I look at my YouTube history I can go through like you know just like I maybe like over an hour at a time I'm just like sometimes like in, and then I would see videos that are looping back into the previous ones and then I, I'll still watch it and I'll be like ah, I know what he's gonna say next it's so good so that's that's how big of a fan I am for your channel and I just want to say thank you so much again for coming in and you know I wish you and uh, Billy all the best and can't wait to see you know more videos of and more buttons that you guys have um, for the stuff that you guys do so keep us in the loop and um yeah um anything you want to say you know to people of the community because I, we actually share actually a very similar fan base so anything you want to say in wrapping up to everyone i mean just thank you for having me i'm really glad that everyone um you know wants to hear about billy and mm. um and this is great let me know if you have any more questions and all um, right definitely do a part two perfect thank you so much i'll see you around kendra Bye. thank you laters <laughs>